This is the story of how I killed my first pet. Yeah, okay, so the title's a little dramatic, it's a little traumatizing, but you know, we're about to move into 2022, there's some things we want to leave in the past, so I figured we could do a little story time today. And any good story time needs a microphone, I don't have a microphone. I have a microphone, it's on the camera, okay? I'm using this because I would like to talk into something for this story time. Um, hi, it's me, the turtle girl, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. Every minute we are approaching closer to 2022. So happy new year if you are watching this next year. Uh, if you're watching it today, I hope you're gonna have a great time celebrating tonight. But you know, kind of in the spirit of the holidays, visiting with family, this actually came up over Christmas dinner uh, because apparently we talk about how we killed our animals uh, over Christmas dinner. <laughs> but just in the spirit of story times and hanging out and just having a chill time, I wanted to tell you guys this story about my first ever pet and about his unfortunate demise. Okay, so let me set the scene here. So I'm about six, seven years old, living in my childhood home. We lived on the waterfront, used to go to the beach all the time. Irrelevant, but those were happy days. Anyway, my mom said we won this fish at a carnival. It was a little, just a regular comet goldfish. So we took him home and we had this tank that was decently big. I mean, to me, it appeared pretty large. But because I was super small at that point, maybe it wasn't that big. If I had to guess now, I would say it's probably a 10 gallon, maybe a 15 gallon. I can't imagine our parents having anything bigger than a 20 gallon. So we're gonna say it was like a 10 gallon tank. So it's decently sized. We didn't put him in a fish bowl. So we started out okay. So we kept this fish on our breakfast bar. So there was the tank kind of in the corner here with its neon colored gravel. There was, I think a castle in there, some bright colored plants. I remember there was a bright purple plant and there that I really liked. And so whenever we went there to eat breakfast or do our homework at the counter or whatever, I mean, I guess I was too young to do homework maybe. So I was probably just like doing my little pony coloring books or something, I don't know. We would sit at that counter and you could see the goldfish swimming around in there back and forth. And I remember me and my siblings, we named him collectively Goldie. Goldie the goldfish. Now Goldie the goldfish was quite the character. He would swim around and we would feed him and we would always feed too much, but he still ate it, you know? And so this fish grew and grew and grew like a weed for probably about two years. I feel like we had this fish for a decently long time. Now I will say when you are small, time passes differently. It feels like minutes are hours and hours are days and days are weeks and time just passes so slowly. I felt, at least I felt like when I was a child, most of the time. So this fish took up a fair amount of my time and my brain power. And I would sit there at the counter, just looking at this fish swimming back and forth uh, in the tank. And so, as I was saying, this fish just grew like a weed. We had him for a couple of years and he had grown to a pretty substantial size, at least to me. To little seven-year-old me, he was a behemoth of a fish. And he must have been about this big, probably three inches, maybe four inches. He was the only fish in that tank. So I think he was pretty happy. I mean, 10 gallon is not ideal, but what am I gonna do? I'm seven years old. I don't know the difference. I just know it's better than a fish bowl, okay? So, at one point we decide we need more countertop space on our breakfast bar. So we take his tank or rather my dad takes his tank and moves it to our guest house. So basically in our childhood home, we had like this really long driveway and there was, I guess you could say like a mother-in-law kind of dealio. It was like a little house with a bathroom and two bedrooms. It was one bedroom. I don't even know. I think he had a bathroom and a bedroom and just like a main kind of area up our driveway. And so that we used as our schoolhouse because we were homeschooled growing up. And so we'd walk up this hill and go to this little house to do our homework. So in the fall, we moved this fish and its tank up to the guest house where it stayed in our schoolroom. Everything was great. Every morning we would walk up the hill and go to the house and see the fish, do our homework, you know, same regular routine. And then, of course, winter came, and it was really, really cold. Freezing, actually. And this guest house didn't really have heating, so we would just bring a space heater up to keep it warm while we were there. But when we weren't there, obviously, like, why are we going to use a bunch of electricity to heat this house that nobody's in? So we would bring the space heaters up for school and then go back down, but then eventually we're just like, that's too much work, we'll just do school in the house at the dining table. So all through winter, we did our school at the dining table and it was nice. We were warm. We could look out the window and see the beach and Mount Rainier over there. And then I don't know how long later we just, well, dad really went up to the guest house uh, just to go check on everything. 
And he realized <laughs> that we forgot the fish. <laughs> we forgot the fish in the freezing cold guest house. And it was so cold that the entire tank of water was frozen. Like ice. Ice on the top, ice on the sides. And you look into the tank and you see a little orange streak in there. Not moving. It's just there. It's like the ice age where it's like, you know, kind of frozen in time. And not only could the fish not move, our dad told us the fish was dead. Like, there's no way the fish is alive. So he goes and he realizes, okay, I gotta defrost this tank. The reason that he defrosted the ice was because the tank had cracked because it was so cold. And as you know, when ice freezes, it takes up more space. And so it had cracked the tank. So he had to defrost it all before he could throw the whole thing away. So he's defrosting the tank, put some of the ice in the bucket, and he starts like pouring regular water on it to try to start defrosting the ice. Now, I don't know why he did this. Maybe it was just his dad intuition, but he was defrosting the little ice cube with the fish in it. We're watching me very, very sad and depressed over Goldie, who we had actually at this point renamed to Double Diamond because we decided we didn't like the name Goldie and we wanted the name Double Diamond because it was cooler. Double Diamond is down there defrosting, okay? Dad had told us he's probably dead. So I was just sad. My little seven-year-old heart broken by my first pet just dying on me like this. He's defrosting this tank. Defrosting it, defrosting it. The water starts coming off. And then all of a sudden, this fish twitches. It twitches! What? How? I don't know. This fish started moving around and moving around. So dad freed it from the ice, let it defrost, let it dethaw. And it was very sluggish at first, but it was obviously not dead. So there we were just like watching. Oh my gosh, we just watched a fish like resurrect from the dead. <laughs> and so dad just kind of puts the fish in some water and I just I'm like, wow. Like, you know what? I prayed that my fish wouldn't be dead and my fish isn't dead. Cause I was like praying, you know, I'm like, oh, please God, let this fish be alive because I love it so much. <laughs> Anyway, the fish was alive, okay? So this was literally like the Captain America fish or like the Winter Soldier fish because he'd been frozen for two weeks or whatever, might as well have been a hundred years to him, and then was defrosted and still alive. Maybe he had some super soldier serum, I don't know. The fish was still alive. He was frozen and he came back to life. And I guess now that I know kind of how fish metabolism works and all of that, like I shouldn't be that surprised. But I, like, for seven-year-old me, that was just, like, one of the most amazing little miracles that I'd ever experienced up until that point. So I was just in awe because of this. And so we got the fish a new tank. We put him back inside on the breakfast bar so he wouldn't freeze to death. And then came Christmas. And at Christmas, we thought, you know what? Maybe, you know, Double Diamond, he's a trooper. We love him so much. Maybe he needs some friends. <laughs> And so for Christmas, we got two new fish. And I remember we got one like regular goldfish and we got one black moor like telescope eye goldfish. I don't remember what is that. I'll put a picture of what that fish looked like because I, I distinctly remember that fish. So we put these two fish in our tank at Christmas. And for those of you who have kept fish tanks before can probably guess what happened. Like we put it, no quarantine or nothing. We just put it in the, the new tank. And probably about a week and a half, two weeks later, we go to the tank and we see Double Diamond just like floating there in the tank with this other little black fish and the other gold fish just swimming around minding their own business. So we were very sad that our super resilient fish that had survived literal freezing in ice had died because we had gotten some new friends and we didn't know what had happened, obviously. Mom and dad just said, oh, maybe they just got sick because of the new fish. But then the new fish died couple days later and then we had no fish and then we put the tank away and didn't have fish after that for a very very long time i think i was slightly scarred by that experience because i don't think we got another fish tank after that until i was like 13 yeah probably about 13 years old so it took about six years for my parents to get over how traumatizing that was i think i kind of forgot about it anyway 
I'm out of stories for today. I hope you had some kind of enjoyment from this. If you didn't, then I failed my job. But in the meantime, just hit the thumbs up. I make a resolution to do better in 2022, which by the way, 2022 has a lot of exciting things planned. A lot of things I'm hoping to do with the channel. Stick around, subscribe if you want to see more. I mean, if you already made it to this point in the video, you already have subscribed or you know you want to. So make sure you do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for a great year in 2021. We accomplished a lot. I did a recap in last week's video, so check that out if you would like. But in the meantime, have a totally awesome day, and I'll see you in 2022.